Hey everyone. This week we're going to introduce a new segment. It's called What's Scrobbling? And basically it's where I'm going to talk about albums that I've scrobbled over the past week. If you don't know what scrobbling is, it's where Last FM will read all the music that you've played over a specific amount of time and it will record it for you. So you have all this sort of analytics about what sort of music you're listening to. I'm pretty excited about this because not only do I get to talk about all the stuff that I listen to, but it's also going to be a little bit different because I am not have any scripts or anything written for it. It's all going to be totally off the cuff and more emotionally based than my reviews, which I like to keep more technical and descriptive of the music. So I'm going to be talking about the top 10 albums that I've scrabbled and some other statistics at the end, sort of like uh, what, uh, what album I listened to the most and uh, what tracks I did. And I might even talk about like tracks that I, like special shout out tracks, like tracks that I really hated or, or something special of note. So, to start off this list, we're going to be talking about Winter Sun. This is the artist that I scrabbled the most over the past week, with 38 different scrabbles. Uh, this is because of the Four Seasons, mostly. I am planning on doing a review about that, so I'm not going to talk too much in detail about this, but it was nice revisiting Winter Sun's previous albums because I used to be a huge fan of them. It was one of the first bands that I, I really got into that was legitimately metal. And so, uh... It was cool, like, re-listening to the original Winter Sun debut and hearing songs like Star Child, which is the first song that I heard by them, and it still sounds pretty good today. And one thing that really surprised me is that uh, Time One has aged pretty well. I was listening to that to sort of get some context for The Four Seasons, and I like it a lot more than I did when I first heard it, and I've been spinning it so much more than I did when I first got the album. Next on our list is Thank You, Scientist. I'm a big fan of this group because of all the jazzy influences in it. It's kind of like they took the style of Coheed and Cambria and the Mars Volta, and they combined it with all this really nice big band jazz. And it just sounds really nice. Uh, mostly I've been listening to Stranger Heads Prevail, which is pretty interesting because when I first heard Stranger Heads Prevail, I also didn't care for that one much. I thought that the song sounded very derivative of their debut, Maps of Non-Existent Places, but I've kind of come around to uh, like it a lot more. I think that there's a little more variety in it, and there are less missteps. Like on Max, Maps of Non-Existent Places, there's this one track near the end, I think it's called In the Company of Worms, it has like the worst lyrics they've written. And there's no like weird missteps or anything as far as I can tell like that. But overall, like it's all pretty amazing stuff. Next we're going to be talking about... Hold on, this is long. Anubis Gate. Okay, so Anubis Gate is one of my favorite bands of all time. Back in like 2010 or 2011 or so, when I first heard it, um, I listened to The Detached, and I kind of hated it. It was just really surprising. Uh, people had been really regaling it and saying like, wow, this, this album is like the, one of the best prog power metal albums. And I just wasn't buying it. And then like after a few listens, it kind of started to click a little more, and it, I'm totally sold. I was totally sold by it. Uh, it was pretty much the only thing that I listened to for like three weeks straight, which uh, hasn't happened very often. I think I did that with like Tesseract's Altered State and maybe a couple others that I can't think of right now. This week, though, I streamed the album A Perfect Forever the most, which is kind of interesting because it's probably one of my least favorite albums by them. It was during their earlier era when they still had Morton Sorensen as their vocalist, and he has an okay vocal style, but... It doesn't quite work with the sound that they're going for, I think. I much prefer when uh, Jacob Hansen and Henrik Fiedre were doing the vocals on the albums. I'm also listening to them a lot because I'm working on a thing called a retrospective, where I'm going to be talking about each one of their albums in order and how it ties into the context of the, the band as a whole. And then I'm going to go through and rate the albums based on how I, what I feel is the best and which is the worst. And yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to talk about them because they're one of my favorite bands, and they're releasing a new album September 1st, and you better believe that I'm going to be reviewing that. I am so pumped for that, because it sounds so good. There's a teaser online on their uh, YouTube channel. You absolutely have to check it out. I'll link it down in the below. And I'll also link all the different artists that I listen to. I'll, I'll link a song that I like by them down below so that you guys can get an idea of what you think of these tracks. All right, next is going to be Ne Oblivis Scaris. Okay, this is another band I'm super into, but I was, I was a little more immediately into them. And so I first heard Citadel by them back in 2014 or 2015 or whenever it came out. And I was pretty immediately floored by it. 
they, they have this really interesting style of um, Opeth, but if it was done in like a black metal framework instead of a death metal framework is the best way I can describe their sound. And they also released a new single this week called Intravenous, which is fucking amazing. It kind of sounds like a lot of the stuff off of Citadel, but uh, I think it's pretty nice. Like, I don't mind hearing more of the same stuff. It seems like they were kind of in a comfortable spot. And it's also hard to tell what exactly the rest of the album is going to be like from this one track, especially since it's the shortest track. I also have a couple of listens from their album Portal of Eye. I was not particularly crazy about this. I think that they were still trying to figure out what exactly they wanted to do with their music when they started Portal of Eye. And the, song that I, the only song that I really liked off of it was In Plague Flowers, The Kaleidoscope. The, the rest of it just kind of sounds really weird. Next, after Nate Oblivious Scarus, we have Tyler the Creator. This is a really surprising one because I'm not much of a I'm not a big fan of rap. I've never really explored the genre too much, but uh, I'm slowly trying to sort of understand what it's all about and see which facets of it make it great. And I was really impressed by this Tyler the Creator album that just came out called Flower Boy. It's really awesome. Like I. I think that he sounds really nice as a rapper. I think that the beats are really smooth and they're very subtle. It, and there are a couple of times on tracks where I felt like he was going to do one thing and then he went in a totally different direction, which I thought was pretty cool. I, I really liked that little surprise. After Tyler the Creator, we have Beyond Creation. So I am pretty new to Beyond Creation. But I was looking them up when I did my execration review to get an idea of these more sci-fi themed uh, death metal bands. And they are a lot closer in uh, style to Obscura, which I really like because I am a sucker for fretless bass. And as far as they go, I've really listened to their newest album, Earthborn Evolution, more than I have the Aura. I just kind of like the way that the songs are structured more on Earthborn Evolution than on the Aura. Although I haven't given the aura like a totally full listen yet, and so I can't really speak to its merits in full. But I really enjoy Beyond Creation. I like that style of tech death with the really loud and beautiful uh, fretless bass. It sounds really nice. After Beyond Creation, we have Circa Survive. This is another band I've been into for about a year, and they released a single a couple weeks ago called Lustration, which I did a review on. And so I kind of have like a cursory interest in their stuff, trying to keep up with it for when I eventually go to review their new album, The Amulet, in late September. And so I'm not too entirely familiar with their discography, except for their album Blue Sky Noise, which uh, I fucking love. Like, that is an amazing album. It has such a good bass sound. Uh, I think that Anthony Green's vocals sound really good. And it presents the most interesting ideas of any other uh, Circus Survive album that I've come across. It's, it's just kind of unfortunate because you go in to listen to it and uh, you just have such a high standard for it that you go and listen to anything else and it's like, it just doesn't, just doesn't sound as good. Which was a problem that I had when I first got into Anubis Gate. I kept on listening to The Detached over and over again and I was terrified to listen to anything else by them because I didn't want to be like, wow, this sounds like complete shit compared to that. But it didn't. And Circus Survive stuff isn't bad either. A lot of their stuff, like, it's not bad but I just feel like it all comes together the best on Blue Sky Noise. Next, we have Death Grips. So uh, this is a bit of um, running music that I use because I'm starting to get into running and Death Grips has a very abrasive and angry sound that just kind of gets your blood pumping and it makes it a lot easier to sort of keep the energy and motivation up to run. But I also like a lot of the stuff that they do with their beats, especially on songs like Spikes, which is probably my favorite rap song ever. The, the beat in that is just, it's ridiculous. It sounds so good, and it's so just like all over the place and uh, so jagged, and it, it just sounds so good. But uh, I've mostly listened to Bottomless Pit by them because it seems to, it, it just is the most accessible, I believe, of all of their albums. I, I have yet to get too terribly deep into other albums, but I have listened to the money store a bit as well and i found that it was a lot it gave me a lot more of a headache when i finished listening to it than bottomless pit did and so i suppose now that i sort of have a mental framework for them now from bottomless pit i should go back and listen to the money store and see what i think of that because that's apparently one of their more acclaimed albums i'm also a big fan of that song guillotine off of x military but i haven't listened to anything else off of that Next, we have Monuments. Monuments is a gent band that I'm super fond of. I do like gent, 
but I'm not super crazy about it. I'm very selective about the gent that I listen to. A lot of it just kind of sounds like bland or derivative, but uh, I'm a big fan of the new Ladder Math debut. I like the way that they combined uh, the gent sound with a little bit of like melodic death metal and other things like that. And I ho hopefully it'll sort of breathe a little bit of life into the gent genre because it kind of feels like it's coming to a standstill recently. But uh, I first found Monuments when they released their album Gnosis, and that album's pretty good. It's got like a few really cool songs on it, and the rest I really don't care for. But their 2014 album, The Amanuensis, is my favorite gent album. The sound is just so good. I think that Chris Barreto's vocals are pretty good, even though they do have that sort of hardcore, like, uh, metalcore style to them. Like, I think that it works fine. I think that, you know, even though generally it's a pretty god-awful idea, it's executed here in a way that's really listenable, and I really enjoy that. And my favorite track of this is Quasimodo, which is one of the heavier tracks on the album, and the beginning of it has this just ridiculous, this groove really there's groups all over the album every song has like crazy ridiculous grooves that are just so much fun to you know just like air guitar to or just you know tap along to and sometimes it's a little distracting when, when you do that at work because you're not focusing on that at all next we have native construct which is a band i got into about a year ago because of their um, album quiet world and i I like it and I don't like it. I I really want to love this band because they do a lot of stuff that I really love. I love the way that they combine the uh, jazz into their music and the way that they have this really epic orchestral uh, instrumentals. But it has the same sort of issues as Between the Buried and Me do, where that they won't focus on one idea for long enough to sort of let it grow. It all sounds like they're trying to cram as many ideas as possible that they can into every single song. And to me, that's kind of grating, because I want to listen to them focus on this one idea and sort of expand on it a bit more. But on Quiet World, they have so many good ideas, but they're all crammed into these songs. Like, y you don't need that many ideas. Like, if, if the ideas are good enough, then they will l allow themselves to play out a little longer. And that's the top 10 uh, artists that I've scrabbled this week. So a couple of statistics. The most listened song so far is Intravenous by Neoblip Scaris, which is no surprise because I fucking love this track. I am super excited for their new uh, album. It's coming out, I believe, in late October. And I can imagine it's just going to be as good as uh, Citadel was. Uh, however, uh, a couple of things that I want to shout out this week are... Um, oh, God, what's the name of that band? Okay, a band that I want to give a shout out to, but not in a necessarily good way, is Lake Street Dive. So, about a week ago, my gear circles kind of broke while I was running, and they kept like restarting and just not acting good at all. And so, uh, I went out to Best Buy and got a pair of Bose Sound Sports to use as, a, as my like running headphones. And I noticed that uh, they had a little Bluetooth uh, over the ear headphones, and so I was listening to the previews on them, and one of them was a track by Lake Street Dive, and I was like, oh man. This girl has such an amazing voice. Like this is this must be really amazing music. And so I download their album, their their latest album that that track was off of, and it's just really disappointing. They have a lot of stylistic uh, tendencies towards like '60s and '70s pop music. There's a little bit of disco in there. There's a lot of blues, and it should sound good. These are things that I enjoy, but they just don't feel like they, there's it doesn't feel like there's any inspiration there. There's no like drive to make this music. And the girl's voice is good, but in that in that same vein, like it doesn't feel evocative at all. And it doesn't really give me that same sort of like emotional uh, uh, movingness that you know the the female vocalist from Anathema would do. And so it was just kind of disappointing, you know, to to hear this and be so like hyped up about it, and then like listen to the full album and be like, man, this is not good. But who knows? Hopefully they'll find their way to making better music and uh, just getting something with a little more inspired sound. Who knows? All right. Well, that's about it for this week. Tune in next week for another edition of What's Scrobbling, and we're going to find out what I'm listening to then. All right. Thanks for listening, guys. I'll see you guys next time.